Well, hi everyone. I have a brief but important update to my video that I posted on September 28th, 2025 about the leaked forensic evaluation report for the westbound Washington Bridge in Rhode Island. And I'm doing this update today on October 3rd, 2025, because earlier uh, this morning, the website What's Going On in Rhode Island posted a follow-up. They're the ones that released the initial portions of this evaluation report from WJE. And now they followed up with additional documentation, including emails between Wiss Jenny Elsner and the state of Rhode Island's state bridge engineer. So this report that was leaked to local media as well as social media news sources was dated April 5th, 2024. That was the subject of my video from a few days ago. And because of the leak to various outside sources, up until that time, it had only been in the possession of a few people. Uh, the State of Rhode Island Attorney General Peter Narona released this April 5th, 2024 Wiss Jenny report on their Washington Bridge Filings website. So it corroborated that, yes, the document that was initially posted, at least portions of it, on the what's going on in Rhode Island that was referenced in their numerous uh, articles and postings was, in fact, the same report that the State of Rhode Island had in their possession. But from what I understand, it has remained in draft form since April 5th, 2024. And the defendants in this lawsuit from the state of Rhode Island against these people who are involved in inspection, design, and construction aspects of the westbound Washington Bridge prior to its emergency sh shutdown in December 2023 did not have a copy of this forensic report from WJE until a couple of weeks ago. Now, one of the key scope items for this evaluation by WJE was this first bullet point, what events and conditions led to the failure of the rods? And we're talking about the tie down rods at the end of the unbalanced cantilever portions of the bridge beams. And it was the discovery of these broken rods that led to the emergency closure back in December, 2023. Well, in my previous video, I mentioned that I thought that there were some things in this report that were glaring by their omission. And for the first bullet item to be related to the tie down rods, there were a lot of things that were absent in that report that I thought should be there or wondered why it wasn't. And that included the full metallurgical report for these tie down rods. And more importantly, there was no discussion about the time frame uh, during which these rods likely broke. And I thought that was a rather odd omission. So going back to the what's going on in Rhode Island website story here today, on the bottom of that article, there's four links to additional documents. And on link three, there's this email exchange between the principal with WJE and John Price, the Rhode Island DOT state bridge engineer. And this email was sent by WJE to Mr. Price, and it talks about the metallurgical evaluation of these tie-down rods. And it starts out saying, on January 5th, 2024, John Coca returned to the site. With the assistance of the current contractor, three segments of the tie-down rod containing the identified fractures were obtained. So they describe where these samples came from. They described some material properties of these anchor rods. But the most important aspect of this email exchange is at the bottom, in my opinion. And I'll just read it here. Based on the findings, WJE concludes that it is highly probable that the two cantilever PT bars evaluated for this study fractured due to tensile overstress of remaining cross sections that had been progressively reduced by corrosion. The substantial loss of cross section caused by corrosion combined with the steel's poor toughness limited the bar's capacity to accommodate a temporary overstress with plastic deformation and strain hardening, and thus the failure is believed to have been rapid and brittle in nature. Given the substantial loss of detail and the thickness of corrosion product on the fractured faces, it is highly unlikely that these fractures occurred within six months of the time the fractures were discovered, as suggested by them not being identified in the July 2023 routine safety inspection. However, a more precise estimate of time of fracture is infeasible. WJE is continuing its investigation into the circumstances surrounding the failures and will provide our assessment of the broader factors in a separate report. So again, these email exchanges were 
previous to the April 5th, 2024 draft report. And these emails uh, suggest that these were discussions about earlier drafts of this report. And so the fact that they're mentioning that these anchor rods were broken well before the July 2023 inspection eliminates or discredits one of the early false narratives that uh, RIDOT Director Peter Alvidi promoted in the early days following the emergency closure of this bridge, in that he said that the anchor rods failed between the July 2023 inspection and their incidental discovery in December of 2023, which led them to close the bridge. And you'll recall, I've pointed out in numerous videos, Director Alvidi came out and said, yes, here's the picture of the broken anchor rod. But we went back and looked, and here's a photo of this same anchor rod in July, 2023. And look, it's not broken. And I've mentioned in numerous videos that this is not a valid comparison because you cannot see in the July inspection photo on the left, the actual location of the rod that was subsequently found to be broken. So I couldn't understand at the time how any degreed engineer, let alone a professional engineer, as apparently Director Alvidi is, would assert such a claim. Because anybody with just basic common sense would know that this is not a valid comparison. So again, the West Jenny email exchange with the bridge engineer from Rhode Island DOT says very clearly that there is rust, you know, corrosion on the face of the anchor rods. That means it was, it occurred well before this discovery, many, many months, if not years, and I'm, I'm summarizing here, paraphrasing, prior to the discovery in December 2023, and certainly before the July 2023 inspection. So let's go back. This is a interview that was conducted last Friday, September 26, 2025, when this uh, draft forensic report was made public. You know, it, it's out and that's good. Um, but, uh, and we were told, you know, instructed not to, not to have it out there. Okay. If you think Governor Dan McKee was happy that this report was made public, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I certainly don't believe he's happy about it. But let's let's take him at his word because uh, there's more cleanup here that, that needs to be done, in my opinion. Again, this report is labeled draft and was issued April 5th, 2024. So my question, I have several. Why was this apparently the only report provided? The email exchange that was referenced on the what's going on in Rhode Island website indicates numerous drafts of this report. So to me, one draft is as good as another. Another question is why apparently was this report not finalized? Now, Tim White with WPRI last Friday reported that in Rhode Island, if a report is labeled draft, it's not subject to disclosure under public records requests. So it appears to virtually anybody with two brain cells they can rub together that the state kept this report labeled draft and planned to in perpetuity to not make it public. And another thing what I'm told from insiders here is that this draft report, even this April 5th, 2024 version, uh, wasn't made available to the defense team. The people, uh, the numerous parties, 13 parties that are being sued by the state of Rhode Island relative to the westbound Washington Bridge until a couple of weeks ago. So, so again, why is that? So to recap my questions is where are the earlier versions of this draft report and why aren't they being made public? Why apparently was this report not finalized? And why apparently, according to my sources, this report was not provided earlier to the defendants in this litigation. So I think this mess is well beyond now what Director Alvidi could, could have an impact on. I think he's really a minor or two-bit player at this point relative to the narratives going on with the Westbound Washington Bridge. I think it's really incumbent on the Rhode Island Governor Dan McKee to make these earlier drafts available to answer the question, if, if nothing nefarious was going on here, if this wasn't an effort to 
hide the truth from the public, then he needs to make the earlier drafts of this report and every, every draft available to the public. You can't just have one draft version of the report out there. Again, if there's a final version of the report, submit that, but certainly submit all the earlier drafts. I think that absolutely has to be done. There's a lot more information to come. My sources indicate that there's over 56,000 documents that are out there right now. And many of them are going to be made available to various media sources in the coming weeks. So again, if Governor Dan McKee has any hope of getting back out in front of this story, uh, instead of being back on his heels and looking defensive and making statements that don't make sense, like, hey, he's glad the report's out and no, nobody tried to hide it. I mean, uh, the facts seem to un indicate otherwise, in my opinion. So let him clear the air and release these earlier drafts, all the previous drafts of this report, and people can decide for themselves to what extent, if any, did Rhode Island state government attempt to influence the contents of this forensic report. So with that, I want to send a shout out to those of you who've contributed to buy me a coffee. If you're so inclined, there's a link in the description. I also want to thank the channel members and those of you who have contributed to Super Thanks. Again, those are excellent ways to support the channel. So stay tuned for future videos, everyone.